The reality is, and one of the most exciting things about working in the Southeast is that there are so many stories that are being told that there is room for everybody. Yeah, There is room for the tall person, the short person, the person with blonde hair, the person with gray hair, the person with wrinkles, the person without wrinkles. There, There is room. All of those stories are being told in all of those different roles are out there. So you've got to be content with who you are. We have that and so much more. Is it okay to be artistically greedy? And if you're in the entertainment industry, we're going to tell you exactly where you need to be on March 18th. Welcome to Get Seen Unscripted. I'm your host, Jesse Malinowski. We are going to dive into acting insights, meet industry pros, and master the business. Don't forget to subscribe and share. We're keeping you behind the scenes and ahead of the game. Hey, hey, everyone. So glad that you're here. Get ready for another episode. But before we dive in, I'll encourage you to subscribe if you're not already subscribed on whatever you listen to, whether it be YouTube, Apple, Spotify, etc. But we are so glad that you're here for another episode of Get Seen Unscripted. And I have to say, if this is your first time here, welcome, welcome. Get ready for your actor journey to hopefully get a little bit easier, a little bit more inspired and motivated. And if you're coming back, Thank you so much for coming back to another episode, everyone. I want to give a quick shout out to uh, some people that have left us a review. First off, I just want to say thank you so, so much. It really does mean a lot that you are taking the time to let us know how the podcast is impacting your actor journey in such an awesome way. It really does mean a lot to me to be able to read those reviews and see that what we're doing is making an impact. And with that, everyone, I have to give a shout out to Melissa Rojas. What's up, Melissa? Melissa said, this podcast is a treasure trove of knowledge for all things related to acting. If you want to level up your career, then subscribe ASAP. Do what Melissa said, everyone. (laughs) Everyone, let's dive in. We have Susan G. Reed in the house. And just so you guys know, I'm probably going to call her G. Reed the entire day. Uh, G. Reed... It's good to have you here. Thanks. I'm so excited to be here, Jesse. It's. I mean, I. I. I mean, I just love you. You do Aww. so. You've done so much in the industry, which is so cool. So I can't wait to just dive in even deeper with you. I've known you for so many years, and it's. I have to say, it's been really cool to like see you transition and just kind of like do all these different things and so gracefully and which with fantastic energy. You're always. I think just like an inspiration when it comes to like doing things at like a very high level and like with really good energy. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. And so you used to be the film and TV agent over at Atlanta Models and Talent. I did. And then you also like transitioned to doing some casting and currently you do some like directing, writing. You're also at GSU. So you do a lot of stuff. I'd love to know kind of since you started or at least our my relationship with you started with you being an agent. What kind of inspired that transition to stop and kind of move into a different direction? That's a great question. I think ultimately it is because I am creatively greedy. <laughs> so <laughs> let's just say that. I like to know something about everything. And I realize oftentimes that once I learn about one area of the arts or of the industry in this case, that what I really find myself wanting to do is learn more about a different area and sort of continue to move through that journey. And what I find is that as I move through and change what it is that I'm doing and sort of morph to a new position, I am bringing all of that amazing experience that I had from the prior position with me. And that's a real gift for me as an artist to be able to look at and and draw from those people and those places and those things constantly. So I think that's one of the reasons that I've I've sort of moved from one thing to another, although stayed, you know, I'm one of the few people since I teach a lot about uh, at, at Georgia State University, particularly about the idea of sort of what's the journey of your career, I realized in looking back on mine that I've actually been working in entertainment the entire time. I've just done many different things within the scope of that. And that's really exciting because you see a lot of people that sort of start working as actors or start working in the arts, and it is, it's so challenging. It's so, there are so many things, particularly for performers, for actors that are 
thrown at you. And you've just got to keep that positive mindset at all times, right? And that's really, really challenging to do. But what I love is that I, I have had these different experiences and they just build on each other for me. So hopefully they just make me a stronger artist and they they just keep uh, stacking up what I'm able to bring for whatever creative project I'm working on, whether or not I'm coaching an actor, whether or not I'm writing a screenplay, whether or not I'm directing, which I'm doing more and more these days for film, regardless of what it is, all of that experience builds for me. So I think if you think of that journey as your creative experiences build and build and build, that that's really what you're what you're wanting to continue to do as an artist because it keeps you alive, right? Even in looking at you in this amazing podcast that you're doing now, right? I can see, I remember Jesse that I met when I was in the offices of AMT, you know, a decade or so ago. Oh my gosh, was it that know, long ago? God, it was, oh my God. <laughs> right? So I remember that, Jesse. I remember you coming in. I remember you coming in with Get Seen and talking about what you were going to do with that. And I, I see all of the transitions that you've made. You've continued to morph your business you're a great example, too, as someone who has, has stayed within the realm of the industry, but you've realized that part of what you've got to do to survive and even get better as an actor is, is to continue to change up what you're doing, right, and find other sort of parallel sources and ways to be an artist besides just looking uh, to performance, right? Mm -hmm. And what do you say for, you know, maybe the the performer that's like, well, no, I got to be all in. I got to be a hundred percent all in or, or, you know, I can't, I can't make this like plan B or, or whatever. And I don't necessarily see it as a plan B, but I could see some people thinking of sure. it that way. And so what would you say to the person that's like, no, I can't shift or change. I need to like stay on this path and stay dedicated and it will happen. Sure, sure. And I, I think you've got to go with wherever your heart's taken you and your mindset, right? So if that's what you think that you need to do, I get that. For me, I probably am going to look at that and say, what's the sort of whole life picture for you? Because I really believe in that balance. Some people talk about this notion of work-life balance. I feel really fortunate because my work has has been my life and I love what I do so much that it's not work to me, but there is a, there's still a balance, right? I was talking to you about this in terms of my agenting days and being strapped to my phone and realizing that at 24 seven, at, there, at any moment I could look down and have 150 new emails that had shown up in 15 minutes. Yeah. That it was that sort of intensity. And I realized for me that that was more than what I really wanted long term. And I wanted to be able to balance things out more and have more creative input since I feel like probably I'm more of a creator anyway. I just happen to really believe that if you don't know about your business, you're probably not going to be successful. So getting back, circling about, or around to your question there, to me, it's about what that balance is. And and I don't know, when I was in grad school, so I got my MFA in directing a long time ago, insert a long time ago, but I still remember having professors that taught me who said things like, you're going to be a better director if you know a lot about music. You're going to be a better director if you know about architecture, if you know about art. If, so just if you take sort of the notion of that philosophy, to me, you're a better artist if you are in the know about everything you can possibly be in the know about within the scope of your business, certainly as an artist, but I think it goes beyond that as well, because I think the mental part of being a performer, being an actor is such a huge part of things that if you don't have, if you're not where you need to be mentally, it's going to be hard for you to be all in, in a positive way moving forward. Because all of us have seen those performers that are like, I have this single minded, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. That's really great. But probably at some point, there's going to be a little bit of burnout. There's going to be a little bit of frustration because you're not achieving at the rate that you want to achieve or you think you're supposed to be achieving. So all of it's all about balance. And the older I get, the more I see that. And you have to find, I think, some sort of contentment with that while remaining constantly curious, right? And, yeah. and moving forward. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I, I'm really big on the balance thing too, but I almost think like balance, it should really be like balance equals happiness. Yes. You know, so it's like really like if you're doing some things right now within your life and you're feeling happy, then like, that's great. Like that probably equals balance to some degree. But if you're finding areas in your life that you're not happy, then that could equal that imbalance. Things. And like, how could you, what, what needs to happen? 
Well, think of your work as just from an acting perspective, right? Since I spend so much time coaching and teaching actors and talking to actors. So if the definition for acting is playing the role of a truthful and honest character in an imaginary set of circumstances, which is sort of my baseline, and I think that's probably everybody's baseline. Certainly, I did not make that up. So playing the role of a truthful and honest character in an imaginary set of circumstances, the truth and the honesty is coming from you. So if you, as as a human being, are in a horrible place, in a horrible dark place, if you are not happy, if you have no contentment, if you're constantly concerned about uh, anything, any number of things that are going on in your life, how much of a hurdle is it going to be to then, let's say, tape an audition right. or something and not have that somewhere in creating that truth and honesty or in the way, percent. right? Right. A million percent. Yeah. So from that perspective, that balance becomes critical. And, and by the same token, I could say, how many how many actors have you talked to that are like, I am killing it. I booked X number of projects. I'm at the top of my game and I'm miserable. <laughs> right. I don't think that that really happens. So I think that that balance ends up becoming such an important aspect uh, to everything that we're doing in life. Here at Get Seen Studios, I believe we really specialize in helping actors get agents. And so my favorite challenge is coming up, everyone. And for a limited time, you could get this six workshop series that's live for only $28. It's our Get an Agent Challenge, everyone. It's two weeks, six workshops, all live online. Now, if you miss anything, don't even worry about it because everything is recorded. But what this six part series really focuses on is gives you every tool and tactic you need to get an agent. And we're all together holding one another accountable to make sure you do the homework, you do what's needed so you can get an agent. Everyone, I love this challenge so much because people that have been looking for agents for two years, get them in two weeks. It is unbelievable. So again, everyone, for a limited time, it is only $28. So grab your spot right now. You'll see the link in the pinned comments below. I cannot wait to see you there. Grab your spot for our Get an Agent Challenge. For sure. So how do you, because I feel like you've, you've done this so many times within your life, how do you like make the decision and kind of, I guess, where does the maybe courage come from <laughs> on like, you know, and I don't know if we want to just use like the AMT example, but like being there and being like, I'm getting way too many emails. I'm so distracted. I'm so focused on this other thing that I'm not doing these other things that make me happy, like time to change. Sure. Uh, uh, that's such a great question. Probably most people would just look at me and say, you're crazy. Uh, so I, what I'll say is that I am eternally grateful for my time at AMT. You know, and it was not one of the, I wasn't sitting there as vice president of the company and head of the TV and film division going, oh, this is just a small thing and anybody could do this. And, you know, I, I, I'm... I realized how fortunate I was to have that position. I was so grateful that that the actors that were at AMT trusted me to work for them. And, and they didn't always agree with me. Uh, not everybody liked me. That's sort of part of what happens when you're an agent. You're not always making decisions that everybody loves, but that's part of the job, right? But I was so grateful for that opportunity. And it was an interesting way. I, I was not working in the TV and film industry prior to that. That was sort of my entrance into the industry. And what an amazing entrance because I got to see all of these sort of back channels to how it works. Everything from, you know, I treasure, you know, I still remember it being something like midnight and I was in the closet at my house trying not to wake up my family at the time because I was talking to an attorney working on the West Coast and I was trying to close a series regular deal for an actor that we were repping. And I and that's that was amazing. Don't think for a second that I wasn't completely thrilled it was all of the things. It was, it was, uh, yes, it was late, but I didn't care because I was, I was going to be fulfilling the dreams of an actor that I knew was working so hard to try and achieve this. And, and I felt all the things I, 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 I felt a part of this amazing, amazing, uh, industry and it was shiny and starry and sexy and all the things. And I was aware of that, but I was also aware of the fact that I, learn sort of everything that I felt like I could learn about the industry in that position while I was there. And it did not fulfill me completely as a creative artist because ultimately I'm a creative. 
right? I really like the business side of things. So maybe that was that's what makes me a little unusual is I am firmly steeped in the business part, but I also really like the creative side. So one can't be not balanced out, right? So that if it's unbalanced there, then it's probably not working for me. So that was a really big leap. And it took me a long time to kind of say, I'm okay with this. But I think that if you don't you know, jump, then you're never going to know whether or not there's anything else that's out there. So by the same token, again, I think I keep getting stronger because I, I take, I take these experiences and then move on to something else. And then I know so much more when I'm talking to you or when I'm, you know, teaching at Georgia State or when I'm coaching or consulting an actor, I have that knowledge because I've sort of been there and am, am, am staying within that, that industry as much as I can while I still try to balance thing out, things out as a creative. But you're right. It's a little crazy. I've had several people that just look at me and they're like, why did you leave this job? Why did you leave that job? Why, you know, and it makes it kind of sound like I'm, I'm, flippantly doing it. And I'm not actually flippantly doing any of it. I've been so intentional about my career and the choices and decisions that I've made with my career. I really have been. So I never, I never make quick decisions, but I also know that if I don't love it, that I'm probably not going to be very good at it. Mm. I know that. And I know that inherently about myself. And so I do the things that I love And part of what's been an amazing aspect of my life is that I've had the freedom to walk away, which is a, that's, that's a, that's a pretty amazing place to be. And that's because of a lot of different things, partly my partner, partly the life that I've built, built. So being able again to say, no, I've gotten what I needed to, I'm going to take this leap. And sometimes I take the leap and it's terrible and I'm down on my knees and they're all scraped up and it sucks, you know, but I, as I continue to say, if you don't have those moments where you feel that way, then when the really highs are high highs are there, then you're rather, you're not really knowledgeable about why they're there mm, or, so true. or how that, what they mean to you. Right. So you have to, the balance is having the real lows, having the real highs, and then being able to kind of um, moderate that in your own way, in your own life and the choices that you make. So. I love that. And how, how do you moderate it? Like, I think, I feel like maybe the key is, is like, you have to understand that if you're in a low, cause mm-hmm. let's, I mean, we're human, it will happen. It there's, there's lows that will happen in our life, no matter who you are. Right. So like understanding, like if you're in a low, like, like it's okay, it'll just get better. Or like, you got to take specific no, action. You take action or, right? Yes. So absolutely. It's all about action. Perfect example. You know, I've got some short films that are fully produced. I've got some uh, screenplays that are out on the festival circuit right now. It's like being an actor. I'm constantly inundated by no, thank you. We're not considering you. You haven't been selected. So then when I am selected, or when I do get that finalist, or when I do get the recognition, it becomes such a sort of creative high. Although that's a really simplistic way of talking about it. Sometimes it's just a conversation that you have with someone that lifts you up for the day, right? I was feeling not great about my writing, and then somebody read something and and reached out to me about what they had read and had a whole conversation, and I got off of that, and I felt at top of the on the top of the world. I was like, yes, I can do this thing, right? So, so again, I think it's partly not letting the lows keep you low, but also continuing to be. You've got to have a ridiculous amount of drive to do this. Right. Mm-hmm. I just can't. And that at some point I'll wake up, I hope one day and say, oh, I really don't have the same drive and that's OK. And hopefully I'll be content with where I am at that point in my life. But I'm not there yet. I keep on a sort of I keep wanting to fight the good fight. Right. And, and be out there and be. And some of it's also helping people. How exciting is that when you have a conversation with an actor, or you coach an actor and you realize, they may or may not get this, but you just got you. You had some moments there where you felt like you really made a difference for them. Yeah, that's it's the really best. fulfilling. That drives you, right? That's a huge. That's a huge motivator. So I think it's just making sure that you keep looking forward for what's the next thing. And it's not. It's not. And you and I talked about this before we started a little bit. It's not a direct line. It's absolutely. It's not. A, if I do X, Y, and Z, I will get this. Because we tend to set ourselves up that way. We, we want uh, goalposts, right? 
We want there to be a sort of a list of things that if we achieve those, we will get to this place. Then, oh my goodness, this career could not be further from that. Totally, right? yeah. You're going to be going this way, and then you're going to take this crazy left turn, and then you're going to have to do a U-turn, and then you're, you know, you're going to go through this door and think it leads to that door, but it doesn't at all. It's all over the place. But again, how exciting is that? Because it sort of teaches you that ebb and flow of life, and it also teaches you, I think, the ebb and flow of what it's like to work in this industry which is nonstop crazy. It's it's kind of like going down like the water slide. And when you get to the end, it dumps you out. And you have that moment where you're underwater and you're trying to get like right yourself back up and, and come back out. And then you come up and you're like, that was such a blast, right? <laughs> yeah. So it sort of has a little bit of that energy, that frenetic uh, energy where, again, you don't know where you're going or what the journey is going to be. But I think that if you get to a point where you're not still having those highs, that that's the point where you need to sit down and go, okay, is this where I need to be? Is this what I need to do? Right? Yeah. Uh, maybe I need to make a bigger change or, or do something else other than that. And I think I've had a lot of sort of mini epiphanies like that in my career. And that's what's kind of led me. And sometimes I've had control of those. And sometimes I haven't, frankly, it's not as if I was the master, master puppet, ma you know, the puppet master there controlling everything. That's not the case. A lot of times it's, it's just life where th things happen and that, you know, you just kind of got to pick back up and, and move forward and also hope that you're, you know, the community is a huge part of it. Mm. The people that you oh, surround yeah. yourself with, Right. There's a larger community that we have of the industry here, which is huge and amazing and wonderful. And then there are the individuals that make up your sort of community of people, right, right that you lean into, that you know are there for you no matter what. I think that that becomes such an important aspect of it, too. And I'm so grateful. I look to all these people and I, I think, oh, my gosh, this person gave me this chance when they didn't have to. I'm really, really grateful for that, you know, and I only hope that I'm able to sort of in some way reciprocate some of that with other people as they come along as I'm trying to sort of navigate or help other people to navigate as well. Yeah, you said something interesting, which I'm surprised by. I want you to elaborate on it. You said, I hope to uh, maybe wake up and find contentment one day. Right. And so I'd love to kind of dive into that because to me, I'm like, that sounds terrible to just be content and to oh, just, a, uh, and, and so I'm just like, sure. Oh, I loved like your point of view on it. Sure. And for somebody else that might be thinking, cause like there is like a beautiful thing within that too, of just like waking up and being like, today is great just because it's today, as opposed to, I gotta make this much I gotta money. Hustle. I gotta, I gotta yeah, I gotta like, let's get the rise and grind. Like, so there is something like very beautiful in it. Um, and so I guess, just kind of like dissecting that a little bit sure. more. Sure. I think it's an age thing, Jesse, which is, you know, I ran into somebody over the holiday that I've known for decades. And she had recently retired and moved, left the state, moved to a totally different state. And oddly, I ran into her at a gas station in the oh, middle of really? North Carolina. Oh, yes. So Life is random. so weird. I was yeah. like, is that? And so <laughs> I had this amazing sort of moment. And I was talking to her and she was, you know, asking what was going on with me. And I was asking what she was doing. And it wasn't that she wasn't, she's still an artist. She's still creating, but she just wasn't out there, you know, looking for work. She wasn't necessarily still directing. She wasn't, she had found, again, other ways to sort of creatively find input or, or to do things that she was fulfilled by. So I think uh, now I wake up every morning and there is, you know, uh, there's fire under my ass. I'm not going to lie. There absolutely is. And and I'm ready to roll. And I'm ready to get out there and just like fucking kill it. Oops, sorry. Uh, you don't have to be sorry. Uh, you say whatever you, you want know, in here. Uh, yeah, great word. Great word. <laughs> At any rate, I'm ready to get up and, and just get out there and go. But I feel like there will be a time when I wake up and don't have that same sort of intensity and I'm content with that. So it's not that I don't have contentment in my life. I do all the time, but it's a different type of contentment, right? And I can see I'm now getting to a place where I can see maybe in a, you know a certain number of years forward, I I will be able to say, you know what, I don't I don't need to keep doing this. Maybe maybe as an artist, I only want to write, and I don't want to keep directing. Maybe as an artist, you know, I want to get back to making pottery, which is something that I love, but I have no ability to do it because my creative bandwidth is limited because we forget that we have creative, band creative 
limited creative bandwidth, but I really believe that in my heart and soul. It means I can't do all of the creative things I want to do all the time. And I think that's what makes me know that I'm an artist and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do because I constantly want to make things and do things. That's always, that's just part of it. And that's in little ways. That could be, again, everything in, uh, you know, figuring out um, what you're going to wear to that could be, you know, designing, a, you know, designing where the furniture is going in a room in your house to doing an audition, writing a screenplay. All of those are sort of creative endeavors in different ways and they take creative energy to do them. And you've got to kind of balance that out because, again, there's not a never-ending source. So right now, I don't have a lot of time to sit around and paint or do pottery. That's okay with me because my creative bandwidth is being expelled and spent in other ways that I want to use it. But I would love there to be a time where I think maybe I could do that. Maybe I would have the ability to to creatively do that. And that would put me in a different place as an artist, right? That would be just a new transition in a different spot. I really like that because I think it's important as an artist to be able to say like, hey, right now I'm doing this thing is fulfilling me. I'd like to do these other things, but not beat yourself up about it. Mm, And I think so often we just find reasons and ways to beat ourselves up. Like I'm never doing enough. I am doing these things, but I want to be doing the pottery thing and I can't find time. And uh, like, so now I feel bad about myself because I'm not doing the pottery and I just keep thinking about it Mm -hmm. as opposed to... I'm actually at like a perfect balance of my creative outlet and like pottery could happen next year or two years from now or five years from now. That's okay. And that's totally okay. Exactly. You got to, you got to hook up with Jen Kelly. She, she talked about doing, she does beautiful. Oh my gosh. She talks about doing pottery on the podcast too. Yeah. That's, that's so funny. (laughs) But I'm not, she's actually creating (laughs) gorgeous stuff. I'm not doing that. And I don't know that I ever will, but just using that sort of as, as an example of there, there are other things that I'd love to do as an artist, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm doing them on a, on a daily basis because I'm greedy. Remember I said I was greedy? Yeah. I'm so greedy. I want it all. I want like to take the orange and get every stinking bit of the juice out of it. You know, I and I realize that about myself because I because I'm doing what I love, right? Yeah. And 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 what a I mean that's just a ridiculously fortunate place to be. And then if you can make a life out of it, that's an even more amazing place to be because don't think for a second that I don't wake up every morning grateful for the opportunities that I had and for what I am able to do right now every day because I'm sustained by it as an artist. And again, it, it, it's so fulfilling for me, right? You know, I feel like greedy is normally a negative I know term, it is. We, but we need to make it not negative. It doesn't yeah, have to be negative. Totally, totally. So I was just going to say like... You like how how do you view that like I'm greedy as an artist as opposed to like somebody else that might be like oh you're being greedy like how right. how, how does it work differently what why, why why is it a positive in this case yeah yes I guess it's it's because I am greedy about wanting as many artistic adventures as I can get yeah that's right cool. so it's not. I'm not focused on the money that I'm getting. I'm focused on curating the experiences that I have. So I spend my life curating all the time, every choice that you make. You know, I can remember at different points in my life being a freelance artist and just having to take anything anybody asked me to do. Will you do this? Yes. Will you do this? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Always said yes. And I believe, you know, there's a, there's a common trope in improv that's the yes and, right? That if you're doing an improv exercise, you're not supposed to say no. You're supposed to always be kind of – and yet at the same time, that doesn't always work if we translate that into life because I think – most of us can get into a tough place if we always say yes and and are not 100%. able right to curate those experiences that we have. So uh, so now I make very definitive decisions about what I want and where I want to spend that creative bandwidth, that energy uh, these days. And and so I, I do think it's greedy because I'm demanding of life. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and, and to the point of not saying yes all the time, I mean, really, uh, it's just like conscious selfishness. 
you know, of like I'm which con- is another sort of like the greedy word. Yeah, These are words yeah. where it's like, wait, but you're not supposed to be selfish. But let me let me talk about that. Let me dig deeper and discuss what that means. Yeah. That conscious selfishness for you, right? Mm-hmm. It makes means making smart choices for you as an artist. Yeah. That hopefully are going to make you then a better artist, which is kind of the goal. Right. To be exactly. a better artist, to be a better actor, to, be, you know, all of it ends up going hand in hand. So I, you know, it's probably not everybody's cup of tea, jam, whatever, but I really do believe in that balance. And I believe that, you know, if your single goal is I want to be a series regular on a television show or on an episodic then that's great. Have that goal. I'm not at all denying that you should have that goal. Have that goal, but realize that maybe there are lots of different ways you can kind of articulate what that journey is and set up how you're going to move forward in that process that are single-minded and intentional and yet still allow you to balance out your life and be fulfilled in what you're doing every day, not just in that one goal that you have. Yeah. And I think it's so important to like, un, like just being able to like break that down more, you know, like if you just talk about like the series regular thing, this might be a little bit of an extreme example, but the more I'm thinking about it, I'm like, the more I kind of like it is <laughs> like, if I'm like, no, I want to be the person that like gets my own show. Like, is it really about having your own show or is it about being like financially free or is it about like, what actually is it? Cause you could go about it different ways. If you really want your own show, you could start a podcast just like this because now I have my own show, Mm -hmm. right? And every single week I have an episode that comes out and I put effort and energy into it and I'm trying my best to make it as great as possible and I'm always trying to improve it. And just another kind of element to that is like when you've done something before, it becomes easier to do it again. And so it's just like in me setting this up to be like, I have my own show. It's my own podcast show that I put together that I produce. Does it actually make it easier for me to get that other series regular show down the line? Because it's just another show, but I've already done it before. Yes, because I think in the best ways, it, it, it lowers the stakes to some degree, right? Yeah. We all have seen that sort of desperation that sometimes we can go to that dark place as an artist where it's, I have to get this. You know, I've always, I've always felt that it's, it's very, if, if you're, if you're focusing so much on one thing that sometimes it can keep you from being successful and you've got to, you know, I can remember being an agent and saying, you know, unfortunately, you're going to have to have those multiple jobs in order to be able to pay for the headshots, in order to be able to pay for the classes. And that stinks that you have to do that. But that's kind of the cost of doing business, right? Yeah. It is part of that. And you, and you need to save up to make sure that you have that. And you're not always going to feel financially where you want to be probably as an artist, because that's part of the journey, right? And that goes back to, again, sort of finding that, finding parallel things that you can do that will fulfill you and help to lift you up. And and perhaps some of that fulfillment will also be giving you a little bit more financial um, comfort so that you're not so much worried and are able to put more into you know, your acting or what it is you're trying to do. So it's all that balance. And none of it's easy. Let me just say, and there's not a single person working in the business that has not had a shit job because all of us have had jobs that we can't stand that we didn't want to do. Everybody (laughs) has done that. Okay. So let's, to be clear about that, right? Hold on. Um, What was your least favorite job that you've had? Oh (laughs) gosh. It's like such a long story. But when I first got out of college, I worked at uh, the Division of Vital Records in Virginia. And that was before technology existed. So it was literally like stacks in a library of these nasty books. Oh, God. And you had to go back and like pull one and then copy it on a Xerox machine and take it in. And I think I I did that for um, I did that for about three weeks before I, I was um, given a promotion because they felt like I might actually be someone who could be forward facing with people. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I had that for about four more weeks and then got another job. But uh, so I think I was there for two months, but it was probably my worst job. Uh, that was that was a really that was a shit, shit job. But I, I can say <laughs> I've never waited tables. So I guess it balances itself out because there are a lot of people that have had to do that or continuing to do that. 
and it's not their favorite thing to do. I get it. But I, I was intentional in making the choice to go to graduate school because I knew it would give me the ability to be able to teach, particularly on the university level. And then I found that I actually loved doing that. So that was a bonus, right? But that was a, me, again, intentionally choosing to do that grad school or have that grad school experience so that I knew I would have more options in terms of what I wanted to do so that I didn't have to do the shit jobs. I could do a job I really loved doing that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, but I could make it something that I loved. Yeah. Right? Within teaching that you do, all the way kind of back to being an agent and some mm -hmm. casting was in the middle there. Can you talk about uh, maybe a common denominator, something that you see actors, I don't necessarily want to say lacking, but like maybe need to work on, build? Like, is there a common denominator from the college student mm -hmm. interested in this all the way to like the series, the, the mm -hmm. closing the series regular deal that you talked about? Yeah. Is there something that you see there? I do, I, and I'm going to say this, and I, you're just going to sit there and nod your head because you know this to be true, too. I think the most important thing is training. Mm. Yeah, I'm surprised at how often people think that at some point they don't need to continue to be training in some codifiable way within what they're doing. Um, and, and whether or not that is a coach that you have that you work with, whether or not that is a group of friends that you, I mean, that doesn't have to, be, that doesn't have to equate to a bunch of money. In other words, what I'm saying, which yeah. I, I know that training and, and, and studying is really expensive all the way also down to reading. You know, I, I, I always have five books that I'm reading. Part of that is because I'm always looking for new books that I'm going to use sometimes as primary textbooks in the courses that I teach. Sometimes it's just because I'm wanting to get more information that way. And I'm, I'm, I'm learning through that experience, but, but it's, the training never stops. So you don't get out and get a four-year degree in acting or move on and then get three more years in an MFA and walk away and go, oh, I've just got this all set. I don't need to train anymore. I don't need to continue to be curious about what the next iteration of my training is because there's always something. It's sort of like when I was talking about being a director, knowing something about everything helps me to be a better director and teacher and human for that matter. But but it's I, I think it goes back to and again, I'm sure there are a lot of people that are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but that's that's part of the rub. I think that that continues to separate us. We've gotten so much better as a market. But I think initially that was a big complaint that the Southeast had was that we were not trained deeply enough, that we were not taking this seriously enough. And boy, did we show them right. We are taking it seriously enough. You can see the amazing talent pool that we have here in the Southeast and the amazing number of studios and just the infrastructure that exists within our film community is is ridiculous. The fact that we have done all of this, essentially it's been decades in the making, but really you can see the last decade has been gigantic in terms of the uh, growth. And that's with things like COVID and with things like a strike and all of these other things. And we're just keeping on, keeping on, right? Yeah. Uh, nobody's stopping us. And, and so I, I think that notion of realizing that we've kind of, that we have to constantly be upping our game in terms of what we do. And, and to me, that starts with training and that starts with, with knowing that, um, that it's a life, lifelong pursuit. What would you say to the person that's like, well, I'm getting some bookings and I'm doing some things. And so like, I don't want to change my trajectory. I don't want to, there's no reason to uh, fix what's not broke. It's happening. Right, right, right. What about that person? In another six months when they're sitting there complaining because they haven't gotten an audition for four weeks or yeah. eight weeks or whatever. I mean, everything in this business is cyclical. And if you haven't figured that out yet, then you are behind the eight ball on it, right? Mm. It is a cyclical business. It, it Life is cyclical, but what we do is. So you're going to have moments where you're, you're doing great and you've got three, four bookings and good on you. That's fantastic. That means you're doing a lot of wonderful things. That probably means that you're pretty balanced. 
in your life. That probably means that, that that training is somewhere in what you're doing again, whether or not that's a formal class that you're taking, whether or not that's a coach that you're working with, whether or not that's just a community of people and you get together on Sundays and, and shoot things just for the heck of it. That's training too. So to be clear, training doesn't always mean that you're sitting there with a book and, and a teacher that's in front of you. There are lots of different ways to train and to keep up on your skills. Uh, and and it's going out there and going to networking events. That's part of training. Uh, let's let's be clear that the notion of training to me is is that sort of whole artist. It's knowing as much as you can. It it's meeting new people. It's finding out about new projects that are being worked on. It's volunteering at events or for organizations that exist, whether or not that's a GPP or a WIFTA or whatever, or Atlanta Film Festival. All of these amazing events that we have here in the Southeast. That's part of the training. That's part of building up that you you learn more. You know, I, I go to Atlanta Film Festival and and sit in on one of their uh, speakers, and inevitably I'm walking away with more information than I had before. Yeah, whether or not right. that's mention of a book or a project or getting to see a short film or or a full length that I didn't know about. So so the more you know, that is that's part of the journey. It's knowing as much as you can about what it is that you love and what you do, and ultimately I believe that's going to make you a stronger actor. If you build up on all of those fronts, not just choose, pick and choose which areas you do that. Is there a such a thing as too much of that? Because I feel like I've seen some actors where they're like, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. And I'm like, listen, another class is not the answer to the booking. Sure. You know, and like, sure, sure, sure. And so, like, you being overwhelmed and you just trying to do everything, but essentially, like, not absorbing any of mm -hmm. it, you're just wasting time. Sure. That goes back to sort of the life balance, I would say. So, if it's somebody that's in that place and they're actually not moving forward as a performer from the classes that you're taking, and I've seen those actors that have done that too. So, I know what you're talking about. And it's always difficult because I sit there and you want to you want to be able to say, here's the here's the answer to that actor that comes to you that's that's saying, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, because there are uh, there are for all of the ones that don't understand the training. There are those that do understand the importance of training and are out there doing the grind and doing all the things that I just said. You're exactly right. And are still not succeeding at the level that they want to. Um, that's the to a, to a degree. That's the mystery of this business. Right. Mm, yeah. And yet at the same time. You never know when the story is going to come along that you're meant to be in, you know, whether that's the feature film or whether that's the episodic. And and sometimes it's, a, you know, an actor moving from these types of roles or moving out of these types of roles, rather, into this new place, right, into this new uh, type of roles that they're doing. I mean, that's that's. I know that we always want to stay young and youthful, but the reality is, and one of the most exciting things about working in the Southeast is that there are so many stories that are being told that there is room for everybody. Yeah, There is room for the tall person, the short person, the person with blonde hair, the person with gray hair, the person with wrinkles, the person without wrinkles. There, There is a room. All of those stories are being told in all of those different roles are out there. So you've got to be content with who you are. So I think sometimes what happens is in the push to try and learn something and be everything and get out there and do it and succeed and succeed, we start to not actually be as happy internally with ourselves. We try to do too much to change who we are and we're not comfortable enough in our own skin to realize that actually in that place, that's where we'll succeed. When we take the breath, when we relax, when we realize, you know, what have we been fighting for that's maybe not moving us forward in the way we want us want it to, can we take a step back and can we maybe do some real introspection in terms of who we are and where we are in our life in the bigger way? It gets back to playing the role of a truthful and honest character in an imaginary set of circumstances. If you are fed up and impatient at how hard you've been working and not getting anything from that, then probably there needs to be some introspection. There needs to be a step back and just looking at things just from a different perspective. Maybe that's going to somebody and having a – maybe that's even just sitting down with somebody and having coffee that you don't know – and, and learning something new from them, and there'll be something that kind of hits you, and you'll realize, ah, yeah, um, you know, maybe that's starting up some sort of new exercise plan. It doesn't all have to be about the performance either, uh, as an actor, because again, it's all of those things. It's it's this layered effect, Jesse. It's not a single. You can't do a single thing, and be 
you know, an amazing performer. It's also, that's what makes it so hard, right? Because we're asking you all as performers, as actors, to, to come with this amazing deck of all these things that are at the ready for you. And if you, in your mind, are sort of not in the place that you need to be in your life, I think it's going to be pretty challenging for you to then go out there and really perform and succeed in the way that you want to. Yeah, and I think another thing to add on to that is within that mindset is like if you are focused on like kind of being in search of it, like like w going in with the intention of like, I'm going to like figure it out. Like mm -hmm. today, when I have this coffee with this person I haven't had coffee with before, like I'm going to learn something from them. When I go to this event, Being open I'm, to that. yes, I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm, go I, I'm gonna meet somebody that I need to meet. Cause I think sometimes we show up and we're just like, why am I here? It's just another thing that's not going to work or, you know what I mean? And that intentionality yeah. within your mindset Absolutely. is huge. I, 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 the whole time you were talking, I was thinking intentionality. Yep. Yes, I, I agree with that. A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think that you can, I don't think that you can overstate that. And then intentionality is part of defining what, what it is that you want and sort of setting up those steps, but also realizing that it, it's there are going to be moments where you have to just let things fall where they fall and be okay with it and then pick yourself back up from that, right, and sort of start again in a different way. You can't necessarily always expect the goals to go exactly or the plan to achieve a goal to go exactly the way you want it to, right? And so having that flexibility, and again, I think that goes back to the notion of the balance, right, being okay when things don't always always work. Um, and then having other small things that you can go to that'll kind of right the ship, so to speak, and we'll get you back where you need to in terms of your mindset, in terms of your approach and what you're doing. Get Scene Studios was founded in helping connect actors with industry pros. We bring in the top Southeast agents and casting directors to really help you get seen by the people that matter. And we really focus this in two different ways, everyone. In one of our signature in-person classes or workshops called the Get Scene 360. You get to have a self-tape evaluated, then you get to work on the callback, and then you also work on a cold read. You spend five hours with an industry pro in the Get Scene 360. And then for our online class and this signature workshop we, we have is called the Perfect Submission. And this mimics the actor's access submission process where you send in a headshot, a self-tape, and a demo reel or clip. And so this is an incredible way to really get feedback on what that submission is looking like. And so everyone, as a thank you for listening, every single month we're going to choose one winner and you get to choose one of these classes. Any class that you want will be absolutely free and this will be our way of saying thank you so much. So all you got to do is head to the pinned comment below, put in your name and email and you will be entered to win. All you got to do is put in your email one time and you will live there forever, which means if you submit this month, you could win three months from now, four months from now. So go ahead and head to that pinned comment now and good luck. Yeah, well, you had the intentions of, of being your greedy artist self, which I love. <laughs> And, and with that, so you've been doing like more directing. And I remember the, I, I think I saw this on, on social media somewhere, but like, this is a while ago now, but I know that you're doing more of it, but like was directing a film in Ireland and like, you've been able to like go overseas and like direct and do all this cool stuff. Like, how did that come up and, and talk about those experiences? That sounds so great. Thanks. A lot of that is just, again, sort of navigating. So if there's something that's presented to you, how do you look for a way to navigate kind of into doing that? My my experiences in Ireland were both connected to Georgia State University and being able to do some study abroads with a bunch of college students. And, and those were both phenomenal experiences. And we were making films when we were over there. We were writing, uh, uh, shooting, producing, editing, uh, actually screening films while we during both of those two trips. 
And then last year, I had the unique opportunity to go to a place called um, Shine Holistics in uh, Umbria, Italy, and do a writing retreat that I got to do, which was really amazing. And I was sitting there in this amazing place going, pinch me now, because I can't believe I'm getting to do this, which was a combination of, of just being able, again, um, to... to, to um, I had gotten a teaching award and, and got some money from that and was able to spend it. it. I couldn't spend it on anything I wanted to, but what, that was one of the things I could spend it on, ironically. Which oh, was, really? Uh, yes, Very yes, cool. yes, which was really cool. So that's kind of why I ended up doing that. But I was there in Umbria thinking, this is so amazing to sit here as an artist and only be able to focus on myself in this particular uh, Shine Retreats is a holistic place. So they, it really believes in whole mind, whole body. So part of it was, you know, doing Pilates in the morning and it was eating these beautiful, you know, this beautiful food that was pulled from the garden on this, on, on, on the estate where we were in Umbria. And I thought, gosh, wouldn't this be amazing for performers, for actors to be able to do this, to really focus on themselves, to come here for a week, um, get, get a massage, do yoga, eat wonderful food, and just look at, at scene work and get on camera and be able to really deep dive in a completely different place, in a com completely different location. And so after I did that writing retreat, I went back and pitched it to them. And they said, well, nobody's ever asked us to do that. Sure. And that's how that, so I created a curriculum and I pitched the curriculum to them and they said, yes. And we did it and it's booked and people are doing it. And yeah. Uh, so, so that's pretty exciting. So it's, again, it was, I, you know, I can't explain what it was about me kind of sitting there in Italy last May going, this is amazing. Yeah. I wonder if there are some actors that would do this. I wonder if if Shine Retreats would be even interested in having something like this. You never know until you ask, right? Yeah. So Squeaky it's, wheel gets it's, the grease. Right. Yeah. It's, it's just like taking the opportunities. You know, I, I would say that with everything from Ireland, with, with a lot of the travel that I'm doing that has to do with the work that I'm producing rather than just traveling for fun. And, and a lot of that is based off of just seeing that there could be opportunities and then trying to make sure those opportunities um, come to fruition in some way and setting them up and being afraid or sorry, not being afraid, but being willing to say this may or may not work. It's okay either way, but I'm going to try this and see what happens. And, and so we, we did really well, we've done really well with the shine retreats in that particular one and, and are talking about what we'll do next summer as well. So that's sort of building, building into more. And I had no idea it was going to be there. Or that I was going to find that when I went off to just write. Right. right? So <laughs> you never know. So most of it, I, I, you know, again, some of it's intentional. Some of it is 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 just kind of tripping along and realizing that there could be something here. I mean, think about how many things you've tried that didn't work or come to anything, which is okay, too. Right. Well, you know, I I'm a, I, I I take that to the next level. Actually, in in my mind, is like, like, because I remember Candy brought up, like, I'm like, we should try like this workshop or this or that, and and she was like, well, you know, when we did something like that before, like it didn't work. Why should we do it again? And I was like, we have to fail multiple times to get to the successes. And like nobody remembers the failures, obviously. Right. You just think about the successes, but you don't just get to the success. You have to, yeah. you have to stumble along the way. You have to trip and fall and be like, this isn't working. Forget this. Come back to it. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's 100%. like, oh, there it is. We got it. But like you have to have those failures first. Mm -hmm. 100%. I mean, I, and I feel like that as a director too. You know, every time I direct something, I walk away from it and think, ah, I probably should have done this and should have done this. And then I'm like, I'm definitely not doing that again. There's no, you know, and so then I come back in and I do my best just to curtail and to make those changes and make those adjustments. And then I, I do the next project and walk away from that and realize there's more that I learned that I was able to, I was able to, um, change, adjust, circumvent some things. And then there are other new things that came up. And then I'm working now on how to make sure that doesn't happen again. So that's part of, that's being a creative, right? That's part of being a greedy artist and finding ways to navigate that to your advantage. And again, you'll have as many opportunities where you get a no, but for the ones that you get a yes on, 
you go 100%. And like you said, it's like everything else. If you don't have some of those things where they don't turn out the way you want to, then you have no sort of learning curve to be able to gauge what you want to do next and how you want to approach it, right? Yeah. And and if you're fortunate, you get enough yeses and you surround yourself by a community that builds you up so that you feel like you're constantly able to kind of reseed and move forward in a positive way onto whatever the next thing is. And so, oh my goodness, I, I you know, that's, I, I just look out and see a, a, a crowd of a million people that sort of helped, helped me along the way, helped lift me to whatever it was that I was doing, something very small, something that was much larger and more impactful, but all of it matters. But none of it is, is too small, right? Uh, and, and so, yeah. You mentioned community earlier, um, and, and I can't agree more, you know, everyone knows that saying, it's like you're the average of the five people around you. And, and I liked how you kind of talked about like almost like the different types of like levels of community. You have like your close knit community. Then you also have kind of like a, a, an outer uh, circle of community. And maybe that's like a, a larger acting class or studio or, or something like that. Uh, but then it's also kind of like the entire film community here uh, in the Southeast. And you're, you're so involved in that. Um, what are different things that you do to, to be more involved and to help support the, the large community of like, I guess, like the city, if you will? Absolutely. Well, it's interesting you said that because I was actually able to be uh, in attendance at a GPP event online a couple of weeks ago. And then found out that our Georgia Film Day at the Capitol is coming up on March 18th at 10 a.m. You know, I always learn so much when I have any conversations that involve uh, our lobbyists or legislators that are working for us to make sure that our tax incentives and in this huge community that we have has built up and has 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 the, um, the the strength and the power of all of us behind it to really make sure that we keep going in the amazing way that we've been going forward in the Southeast. But one of it, it, some of it is just being aware of those other things that are going on, whether or not it's participating in Georgia Film Day down at the Capitol and showing up. And by the way, anybody that wants to go down there can come down there. Every single person is needed to help make sure that, that everyone, particularly our politicians that are down at the state, know what a huge impact this is making for us, this industry is making for us, our lives. And it, it just kind of continues, right? It doesn't just stop at, at the shooting of something. It's it's bringing, um, bringing business to our state and bringing a livelihood to our state that I, I'm so proud of. I'm so proud of living in the Southeast and living in Georgia and Atlanta in particular and seeing what we've done in the past decade. So, so trying to get out there and support that is a huge thing. But I think supporting the arts as much as you can, no matter what it is, whether or not that's finding your community at a particular studio, whether or not that is, again, having, you know, whenever I talk to new actors who have moved here recently, my first question is, yeah, who are, who are you? Have you found a community? Have you found your tribe of people? You know, what are you doing? You know, who are those people, um, you know? going out for coffee, catching up with them in any way that you want to, that helps to build that community too. Uh, but I think being aware of what's going on is is important to supporting what we have and what we want to continue to build here. So that, um, but there's any number of, you know, if you haven't been down to, uh, and I promise nobody's paying me, uh, if you <laughs> haven't been down to Trilla Studios to that Rome area down there that's built up, um, yeah, everybody wants to go to the studio. I'm not talking about the studios themselves. You can just go down there and, and sort of wave at the studios that are off behind the fences as they should be. But there's a, there's a beautiful community that's continuing to be built up there uh, of housing developments, um, mixed use. So they're great restaurants. There's there's a coffee shop down there. Just neat things to sort of be. A, there are lots of ways to be a part of our community to support our community and kind of be aware that are just little micro things, right? They're not massive. They're not massive. You know, just take a trip one Saturday down there and grab a cup of coffee or have lunch in a restaurant there. Or, um, you know, again, um, check out a podcast that you haven't heard before. Get on the, I mean, for all that we don't like about social media, social media is a way to really connect and you can kind of choose how you use that. But 
every day when I am teaching, I say, just go online and do a search. I, I put the craziest things in my search bar, you know, and, and it's any number of weird things that come up. And a lot of times they have to do with industry or finding out something more about a person or finding out about a studio or, or whatever it is. So making use of that, I think is so important, I think, to supporting our community as well. I think, I think that, I think you've made it sound very easy, which I think is great. <laughs> um, but I also want to bring up like, but is there anything more that like as a community you think we should all kind of like step up to the plate about? Uh, I think that th that's an awareness that what we do have is fragile and and mm. that we have to get behind it and we have to continue to support it in any way that we can meaning that that you know historically if you look at some other states that have lost their tax incentives that has made a tremendous difference that has in in some cases nearly obliterated the business that they had i'd like to think that every year that passes uh you know our infrastructure gets deeper and deeper yeah. and that protects us more so that when something does happen, because likely at some point in our lifetime, things are changing, things are cyclical, things will change. Uh, we may not always have what we have right now in terms of this. I mean, California's tax incentive got change. all. We, yeah. You, you looked at that. I mean, look at North Carolina, look at Louisiana. I mean, we can name at endless states and sort of Florida. talk about yeah, yeah. the changes that have been made with those. So, so at some point there will be changes. So how do we protect ourselves against that? To me, it's just making sure that you have an awareness of that, that you're out there, that you, you know, there's no shortage of easy ways. Um, the the uh, Georgia Department of Economics that holds holds the uh, film industry, their website is a fantastic website, is a fantastic resource. And uh, it talks about everything from, and you talk about this. I love that you're, I, I always see this. I'm like, Jesse, Jesse's doing a shout out to whatever feature film is shooting uh, or a new episodic that you're very much on the ball with keeping up with that and spreading and disseminating that information. That's really important for us to know. Uh, and, and again, you can go online and look up what's filming in Georgia and you get a list of things that are filming too, keeping up with things like that, being in the know about that and supporting that as much as you can, I think is, is pretty important as well. So what happens on March 18th and why is it important that we should go out there? Sure. So that's when our, you know, the legislature is in session. So there are all of our politicians are down there and they have declared specifically March 18th, Georgia Film Day uh, uh, at 10 a.m. down at the Capitol. We can come down there. There will be people that are listening. Uh, so the more people that we have down there and the more people that are supporting that particular uh, event, it, it makes those of us you know, we already know in the industry what it means to us because we're doing it right. Yeah. We're here. We're, we're front line in all of this. But not everybody's front line. Not, not everybody understands that. So it's it's a numbers game, literally, of, of you know, who are who are who are the people that can make decisions for us? They're going to be down there. So showing up and saying, hey, this this industry means something to me and is impactful. It makes a big difference. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that brings us to our spotlight sign off, which is five questions to end strong, Miss okay. G. Reed. Okay. Question number one is what's something that you're super grateful for today? Uh, super grateful that I actually got to show up today and have this conversation with you. Although my grateful list goes on and on. I, and so I could say lots of things, but I'm just going to go ahead and keep it simple. I'm grateful for, for this film community and for the relationships that I've been able to build in working in this community, like knowing you and being asked to come on here and talk about this. Uh, There's so many people out there that have a wealth of information about the industry. So I am always humbled and grateful that anybody wants to sit down and have a conversation with me or hear what I have to say. And I'm aware of that. And I think that's really important. So, well, it you. was, it's been fantastic. So I'm so glad that you're here. I'm also grateful for that. Uh, what is a TV show, movie, book, or event that completely changed the trajectory of your life? 
Ooh, there's so many. That's a really tough one. So can I can I do? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do. There are lots of TV shows, but it's easier for me to talk about sort of things in the here and now. And what I will say is The Bear has been getting a lot of awards and a lot of, but when that first season came out, I lost my mind. And it was probably, I'm going to hearken back, interestingly enough, to True Detective. Uh, True Detective is, of course, ha- has a new season out right now, and this fourth season is a really strong season. But I still remember the very first season of True Detective, which was sort of before we had moved into the realm of what is episodic TV going to turn into? Obviously there wasn't the streaming. There was none of that was happening at that point in the game when the first season came out. And I think that it was episode six out of eight that I lost my mind over. It might've been seven. I should know that, but I can't right now. Well, everyone go watch both. But um, (laughs) the first, yeah, it was the first season. It was the Matthew McConaughey, Woody Harrelson season. But I remember, like I said, I think it was season six and I watched it. And I lost my mind, and I thought, "This is this. There's no. It was. I, I. I had no words. I was so overwhelmed by everything from the writing to the way that it was shot to the acting to the whole principle of it that it. My bar got raised to this ridiculous place because then it was. This is the expectation that I have of what everything should do for me, mm. right? And and I do think we're in an amazing place now with all that we have at our fingertips to watch and to see. And so when I have a show like The Bear that I see that impacts me in that way, and I, I see not just moments, but again, everything from uh, from the acting is so so much what I focus on. So I'll see just, a, it's not a whole episode. Usually it's 30 seconds. It's a minute where I see acting that is so authentic and that is so amazing, or or it's 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 how somebody lights a cigarette, or it's it's again sometimes the smallest of things that blow me away in terms of the performance. And so I think that one really stands out for me. And I I thought when I saw the first season of it, and I was using I was using that and and showing clips of that and, and teaching off of that. And then season two came out, and I thought, oh my gosh, season two is is equal to season one, which is a pretty remarkable thing to be able to say we know that right. So I think that that's a really great one. As far as books, again, I always have a lot of books that I'm working off of, but a book that I think actors don't ever look at that I think is a great book for actors is Judith Weston, Directing Actors, which technically is a directing book, not an acting book, but it talks all about the craft and the technique of acting. And and really, it is meant to help actors figure, sorry, it is meant for directors to figure out how to talk to actors, which is mostly, you know, on my daily life these days is as I am teaching directing, trying to teach directors how to speak to actors, how to understand what that language is, what that foreign language is, because I continually am amazed at the fact that for film and TV directors, there is someone who does just about or can do just about everything for the director, with the exception of telling that story and talking to the actors and getting that performance out of the actors. And so that means it is inherently on the shoulders of the director to be able to do that. But it's also on the shoulders of the actors to understand what that language is and to understand that sort of give and take that happens in the moment when you're working with a director and you're an actor and you're trying to get that performance for that director and tell the story that you both want to tell. So Judith Weston directing actors, there's a 20, um, uh, or a 25th anniversary edition that came out a couple years ago. I actually uh, like the original one that's a little bit older, but that's a great book. All right. I'll stop there. I can keep talking <laughs> about things, but I'll stop. I don't know. I, you're great. You're it great. wasn't a simple answer, was it? No. You're like, tell me a TV show and a book, or no. tell me one of these, you and I'm like, me... blah, 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 blah. No, I love it if there's multiple. <laughs> um, and it's. Just, I think it's just serving the audience in such a great way, so thank you. Uh, what's something in your daily routine that you really cherish? Uh, Pilates. So I'm a regular practitioner of Pilates. And okay. It's life changing for me. It was life changing for me. So. Why? How? Uh, it changed the. It changed what I can do with my body. Did in it terms make you taller? Physical. I know. Well, actually, yeah, I think it did. My really? husband thinks it did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like, I think you grew like two inches because my posture got so much better mm. because I had to. Because you're building up that sort of muscle structure and everything is about the powerhouse and uh, the control of, of that area. So it it makes me a happier person. It makes me a better person. It makes me feel more positive about myself and my body, but it also empowers me. So I'll be there doing crazy things that I think, 
how do you do this while I'm doing it? Uh. You know, <laughs> so it's just um, yeah, a phenomenal sort of thing that's not just physically but also a mindset for me. Mm, I love that. I feel like I need to get into some more Pilates. I've done some Pilates before, and I feel like I've liked it, but it's not like a workout I go back to. Right, right. So uh, I go to uh, shout out Powerhouse Pilates, which is in uh, Marietta, Georgia, but they have all of the, they have the reformer, they have the tower, they have the mat classes, but they also have chair classes, which are particularly uh, challenging. So I just started a new chair class and I'm sore in some places. I didn't think I could be sore. (laughs) We'll leave it at that. (laughs) Nice. Well, the next question is, what's something uh, that you're currently trying to improve in your life? Mm. And so uh, I'm like, sure. is it chair Pilates? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, probably that a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what am I trying to? I'm trying to be a better writer and a director, a better writer and director, which are not new things to me, but they're things that I'm continuing. Writing is probably something I'd still consider that's sort of a new, a newer skill that I'm digging deeper in. So I need to get better at that, and I need to, I need to learn more from others and really be leaning into that more. Uh, for sure. And as a director, I'm always just trying to be a better director. And that's just knowing and doing and reading and, and, and life experience and all of those things. Great. Last question. Do you read based on your life? And if the, if we could get the listeners to just get one piece of advice and you're like, I just want to make sure everybody gets this one thing, Mm -hmm. what would that be? Try and find a way to enjoy the journey. You know, life is short. So if you don't love what you're doing, and it's not that you're, when I say love what you're doing, you're not going to love every minute of anything. So don't think that I'm not aware of that. But but if you wake up in the morning and you're excited to get to whatever it is that you're doing next, that's the goal. So yeah. if you've been able to create a life for yourself where you wake up and again, and, and that's not every minute, but there's an excitement of what do I get, what am I getting to do today? Then, then to me, do some soul searching about what it is that you've chosen to do. Because particularly as I've gotten older and, and just seen things that happen in life, I, again, life is very short. So you want to live to the fullest in every way that you can. And that means embracing what it is that you're, you're here. And I think, you know, find why you think you're here. I don't, you know, at, at, the, at the age that I am right now, I don't have any doubt that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. There is not, a, there's no question in my mind at all, at all, that I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. So find what you're supposed to do and then be able to embrace that. To me, that's sort of the goal. Yeah, if, I, if I may, and please jump in after, you know, I think the find out what you're supposed to be doing for some people might feel overwhelming, might feel really hard. And sure. so I'm like, I think it can be simplified in just like, do more of what makes you happy. Sure. You know, like if you like to go on a hike, Mm -hmm. like go on more hikes. If you like hiking, like if you like playing with your dog, like did you play with your dog in the last, Mm -hmm. you know, six hours in the last day? You know, what are just some things? And I think if we can just like bring some awareness to, I enjoy doing this. And it's like, well, then do more of that. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's things that maybe we did when we were a kid, that we're like, that was a blast. And it's like, when was the last time you did it? And you're like, I don't know. And it's like, well, that's silly. Like do more things that make you happy. And I also think there's the ability to do the more things that make you happy and then be able to look at those things and figure out whether or not you can pull them in in some way to the rest of your life and what you're doing and allow that to sort of catapult you to the next thing too, right? So, uh, so I think that that notion again of there's not an artist out there that only wears one hat. We all wear many hats. We all do many different things as artists. Again, uh, the more you can kind of find those parallel areas that still will fulfill you, but then also keep you working towards what you want to do. That's, that's, that's winning. That's, that's the end goal. Right. For me, that's the end goal is to be able to combine all of those things. And at the end of the day, feel like, oh, yeah, 
And and I think what's also part of that is I want to, you know, I know personally I want to feel needed. I want to feel like I'm able to help people in some way, regardless of what that is. So that, that that if somebody says, hey, will you help me with this? Then it's pretty, usually that answer is a pretty easy yes, because that fulfills me to be able to do that. That's part of that creative aspect of, of what I'm doing too. So um, seek out those relationships that will help to lift you up and move you forward in a positive way too. I think that's super important. That's part of that community also. Yep. So important. Miss Susan G. Reed, thank you so much. It has been so awesome to have you here and share this time with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So grateful. Everyone, if you enjoyed this episode, please send it to a friend, someone that you think would get a lot out of this. Also, let us know what you thought about the episode. Leave us a review and make sure to subscribe. Everyone, thanks so much. This gets seen unscripted. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.